Babies being born is usually a time of great excitement and often enormous trepidation. We've gathered together some of the more unusual and unique ways in which some animals give birth to their young. So enjoy! From a sloth dangling upside down to a toad squeezing babies out of her back, this is what these 20 animals look like while giving birth. Number 20. Elephants Elephants are extremely protective family units and they have sophisticated methods of communication amongst themselves, so it should come as no surprise that these animals are social even when it comes to giving birth. They know that they need each other in this potentially vulnerable time. African elephants are generally pregnant for 22 months, and Asian elephants have a gestation period of somewhere between 18 and 22 months, and these are the longest pregnancies of all mammals. They usually have only one baby at a time. When a female elephant is close to giving birth, she'll often seek the close contact of another female in her herd for protection while she's in labor. The rest of the herd may actually come by and circle the laboring female, offering her protection from all around. They give birth while standing up, and the baby elephant usually pops out head and front legs first. Like most of the larger mammals that we'll have looked at today, the only thing that elephants do that might seem a little bit bonkers is that they'll actually eat the afterbirth. But the reason for this is extremely sensible, as it simply helps them to avoid detection by any would-be predators who may fancy the easy pickings of a newborn. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Mouse Mice have an extremely short gestation period. The mother mouse becomes pregnant, and then within three weeks, she'll give birth to a litter of baby mice. This is one of the reasons that if you happen to get mice in your house or some other place, they seem to be multiplying incredibly quickly. That's because they probably are. That phrase, add it like rabbits, could easily equally be attributed to mice. And then when those baby mice are born, there are going to be at least five or six of them, but frankly, it's not unusual for there to be as many as a dozen. There's the fact that the typical female mouse can give birth to between five and 10 litters each year, and she can mate immediately after giving birth, having another litter just 25 days later. And each of the females in a litter, well, they can do that pretty much the same way to infinity. And it's no small wonder that we're not completely drowning in a bazillion mice. This thought just exploded my brain a tiny bit. Number 18. Rabbit. Rabbits are famous fornicators. I mean, where else do you think the phrase add it like rabbits comes from? So it should come as no surprise that they also produce a lot of babies all the flippin' time. Rabbits generally begin breeding when they're about six months old, but they can begin as young as four months old, and the gestation period of a bunny pregnancy is pretty short, generally between 30 and 32 days. This means that they can make a whole lot of babies in a short space of time, and before you know it, these bunnies are breeding, well, like rabbits. When she gives birth, the female rabbit will prepare for a couple of days beforehand by building a nest. She makes it as cozy as possible and can be seen pulling out her own fur even to line the sides of the nest. When she actually pops the babies out, the doe will then clean the kittens. Yep, that's what baby bunnies are called. And then she'll eat the placenta and all the other junk that comes out with it. And in a most badass way, she cuts the umbilical cord with her teeth. And that's about it for the birthing process, much like any other mammal, really. Number 17. Anaconda Anacondas are massive snakes, literally the biggest on the planet, and they can grow to a monstrous 550 pounds and be 70 feet long. To get this big, these serpents need to eat big prey, and amongst their favorite meals that they enjoy eating are deer, wild pigs, caimans, and the occasional jaguar. Anacondas are constrictors, they're not venomous snakes, but they do coil themselves around their prey and squeeze them until the creature asphyxiates, and then they'll swallow the prey whole. So you can only imagine just what a pregnant anaconda might be able to eat. The anaconda, as a boa, does not lay any eggs like other snakes, but will actually give birth to live young. The 
baby snake's going to develop within its mother's body inside of a clear membrane instead of a shell with a yolk sac attached. This offers the baby snake's protection from predators and keeps the young at a relatively constant temperature, which is an important thing for reptiles, you know. The mother's going to give birth to the babies, sometimes in shallow waters, and then they're on their own. The mother snake does not play any kind of role in raising the babies after the birth. Although they are bigger than many snakes when they're first born, the baby anacondas are still at risk of being eaten by many different creatures, from caimans to lizards and even other anacondas. It's a tough start for these guys. But if they do make it, there are very few predators that will prey upon the fully grown snake. Number 16. Chameleon there are different sorts of chameleons, and depending on what species you happen to be looking at, they're going to give birth in different ways. Some species will lay eggs, as you would expect from a reptile, whereas there are other species that will actually give birth to live young. The kind of birth that involves laying eggs is called oviparous, and that means following mating between female and male chameleon. After a period of about three to six weeks, the female is going to lay a bunch of eggs, usually between 20 and 200 of them. She'll dig a tunnel in which to bury her eggs until they're ready to hatch. The second kind of birth is that of live babies that are being born directly from the female chameleon, and she goes through a kind of gestation in which the babies are incubated in their eggs inside of the mother, you know, like we've seen with boas, where they're attached to a yolk sac for development but do not have a shell. After about four to six months, the female chameleon's going to give birth to the fully developed babies. Those newborns are covered in a sticky membrane, and their mother's going to use that to stick the whole mess to a branch of a tree, and then the baby will emerge from that membrane. Ew. Number 15. Sloth. Sloths are famously slow. They're even fairly slow at pregnancy. The average sloth gestational period is about 11 and a half months. Well, that's for the two-fingered sloth. The three-fingered sloth gets the whole business dealt with in about six months. Although this is a guess, as scientists have not been able to actually study the full length of the three-fingered sloth's pregnancy up close, so they're just still kind of estimating. The way that the sloth gives birth is unusual in most of the animal kingdom, although probably exactly what you might expect from a sloth. When it's time to have her baby, the female sloth will climb down to the lower branches in the rainforest canopy. She will then proceed to dangle upside down, see, just as you would imagine, and give birth in this position. While it may seem to defy logic and gravity, it's to try and prevent the baby from falling to the ground. Although, that's the reason that the female sloth also chooses lower branches branches. Because if the baby does fall, they're less likely to be hurt and she can easily go and retrieve the newborn from the forest below. It would seem that the sloth is quite casual about childbearing, as they seem to be about most things, really. Number 14. Hippo. The hippo, after mating of course, will be pregnant for about 240 days. That works out at about 8 months. When she feels that she is about to give birth, the female hippo will then take herself away from all the other hippos to go into complete isolation until her calf is born. Most hippos have just one calf at a time, but occasionally they're going to have a couple of them in one pregnancy. She'll give birth to the baby underwater, and they'll then emerge with their hind legs first. The water birth does help the mother hippo to save energy, and it serves to protect the tiny new hippo from being attacked by predators like lions and hyenas. When the calf is about 10 to 14 days old, the mother and baby will then return to the hippo group. They spend that time bonding, and the baby will have imprinted on the mother. That just means that they're able to recognize each other in case they become separated within a larger group. Number 13. Naked Mole Rat the naked mole rat is an unusual animal, surprisingly not just in appearance. They're really good at living underground, which is lucky because if they were above ground too much, I think that we humans would all be too well freaked out. They have specific and unique adaptations which allow them to regulate their own body temperature almost completely ectothermically. This means that they're the only mammal that is cold-blooded. It's also resistant to pain, and it doesn't appear to feel pain in its skin at all. It has very few needs and can live with very little oxygen, all on the account of its remarkably low respiratory rate. The naked mole rat 
bat also seems to display high resistance to disease and has a very long lifespan, but it's still one of the most terrifying looking animals I have ever beheld. These unusual creatures live in colonies, meaning that they will have only one breeding female at their head, and she's known as the queen. All of the other members of the colony are workers, you know, like bees, basically, and this is an especially unusual situation amongst mammals. The naked mole rat is actually only one of two mammalian species that are known to live in this style. The gestation in these animals is especially long for such a small creature. They will, on average, carry their young for about 70 days before giving birth, usually about 10 pups. About seven of each will end up surviving. Number 12. The Gastric Brooding Frog This was one of the more unusual species of frogs that we've known about and see disappear from the planet. The gastric brooding frog was an amphibian, the female of which would convert her stomach into a womb in order to grow her young. Does that sound weird? Well, that's because it is. The mother frog would swallow her own eggs, stop making stomach acid so as to avoid digesting her children, and then hatch the eggs, grow the tadpoles, and get really, really fat, even though she would not eat anything for six entire weeks. In fact, her stomach would distend so enormously that her lungs would collapse and she would have to breathe through her skin. Finally, the fully formed froglets would be birthed by being regurgitated. Birth is always a bit messy and gross, but this is a whole new notion of weird and disgusting. Anyways, these strange frogs were no sooner discovered in 1972 in Queensland, Australia, than they began to disappear again. The last specimen was seen in the wild in 1981, and the last in captivity would perish in 1983. And then, in 1984, they discovered another species of frog that had the same brooding habit, but whoops, that one also went extinct within a year. Seriously, what the actual heck is going on here? Apparently, the only thing for it was to try to resurrect the gastric brooding frog by way of cloning, and that's what these scientists are in the process of achieving right now. They believe that by understanding this frog better, they may be able to learn medical stuff to help treat people with stomach diseases. Number 11. Suriname Toad these toad babies enter the world in one of the most unusual ways. The Suriname toad is also a pretty unusual looking creature. It doesn't look like any other kind of toad. They have eyes on top of their heads and no eyelids, so they're often referred to as the stargazer toad. The flat body and funny triangle-shaped head of the Suriname toad already puts it in a whole different category than most other toady counterparts. I mean, it does look a lot like when a toad gets run over, but that's also how it starts out looking. The thing that makes this one the weirdest of them all, though, has to be its birthing technique. The toad babies will make their way out of their mother and into the world by way of tiny holes on their mother's back. They don't go through any kind of larval or tadpole stages as other species do. They simply pop out of this cluster of little holes as fully formed, even if dinky, little toddlers. They measure about a half an inch long and are usually born after about three or four months gestation, and then they go off on their own. Number 10. Lion the way that a lioness gives birth is not so different from many other animals, really. The gestation period is about 15 weeks long, and when she's ready to give birth, the lioness will then take herself away from the rest of the pride and find a secluded spot, usually a marsh or a cave, where she's then afforded some protection from other lions and various predators. Perhaps because of her built-in defensiveness in this dangerous environment, or perhaps for the benefit of gravity, she will give birth standing up. She pushes the lion cubs out using her muscles, and then the lioness will cut the umbilical cord with her teeth and clean up the cub. A regular litter can be anywhere between one and five lion cubs, and these animals can give birth about once every two years. <laughs> the mother lioness will stay with her cubs away from the pride until they're big enough to follow her and keep up. And when they're born, lion cubs are very tall. They don't even open their eyes for about three weeks, though. After about six weeks, they may return to the pride, but there's a strong hierarchy, and there are already older cubs in the pride. And because of this, they may stay away for up to three months before joining them. Then they're probably big enough to stand up for themselves a little bit better. It can be tough, even when you are the miniature king of the jungle. Number 9. Rhino 
Rhinos are some of the longer pregnant creatures of the animal kingdom. Not the longest, that's a certain species of shark, but it's still a substantial amount of being prego nonetheless. The rhino is, on average, in the gestational period for about 488 days. That is well over a year, and just so you can compare, the human pregnancy lasts about 280. They will then, after all that time, give birth to just one rhino calf. The rhino mother is one of the fiercest and most protective parents in the animal kingdom. She'll devoutly protect her offspring from predators and other dangers, laying down her own life in order to save her young. Number 8. Sea Turtle Sea turtles are creatures of habit. The female sea turtle will return to the same spot year in and year out to lay her eggs. In fact, they return to the very beach where they themselves hatched, and the cycle continues like that infinitely, it would seem. The sea turtle's going to lay her eggs during the summertime in the warm weather. She'll crawl from the sea up to the beach and a place above the high water mark, and then she'll dig. Using her back flippers, the sea turtle will dig a deep nest in the sand, and into this hole she will then lay her eggs. This can take her between one and three hours to accomplish. In total, she's going to lay up to a hundred eggs before slowly making her way back down the beach and out into the sea. And that's it for her parental duties. The sea turtles will then hatch when they're ready and will do almost the same thing at the same time. When they have hatched, they will then make a collective dash down the beach toward the sea, going all together in a massive group, which helps more of them to survive any attacks by waiting predators. After they make it to the water, they're not seen again for several years, as they spend their adolescence in the sea, hiding and growing and trying not to draw any attention to themselves. Unlike the common human teenager, who is all over the TikToks, apparently. Number 7. Seal the mating of harp seals is a bit of a bun fight. The males are going to do battle with each other for the chance to do it with the female and then make babies. After this boxing match decides the paternity, the business of mating then goes much as you would expect. You know, with a bit of a special cuddle and a trip to the doctors to pee on a stick? Well, sort of. The female harp seal will be pregnant for around 11 months before giving birth to her pup, and they'll head to the ice to give birth. Many female harp seals will be out there doing the same thing, and since things can get pretty confusing with all those mothers and babies all over the show, they use their keen sense of smell to recognize each other. Each mother and pup will be able to spot each other by their own unique scent. The harp seal pup is born weighing about 25 pounds and measures about 3 feet in length. They'll nurse from their mother for the first 12 days, which helps them to get that thick layer of fat called blubber that helps to protect them from the cold conditions. When the seal pup reaches about 80 pounds, they're then left to fend for themselves, and their floozy of a mother is going to go off in search of another mate to begin the process all over again. Number 6. Bat. Now, I don't know about you, but this is literally the first time that I have ever thought about how bats give birth. It has never, ever occurred to me before. Never. And it turns out that, as mammals, bats have babies pretty much as you would expect. The only thing is that they don't have loads of them. In fact, they have one bat baby, which is called a pup, at a time, and that pup is then raised by the mother bat, much like other mammals do. It feeds from its mother's milk and hangs about with her until it's grown. Bats only have one baby at a time because there's basically no room in the mother for any more. Bat babies are quite big in relation to the mother, some as much as a third of her size. Baby bats will feed from their mothers until they can eat solid food, and then they'll stay with them until they're about three or four weeks old. After that time, they stay with their family of bats, and most bats still hang about in big groups, but they'll be more useful and productive members of society, taking shifts and hunting with the rest of them. They can't actually fly solo until they're about 8 to 12 weeks old, so they continue to rely on their mothers until then. Number 5. Okapi 
A vague relative of the giraffe, the okapi is a long-legged hoofed animal that also chews the cud. But other than those shared characteristics, the okapi really is a unique-looking creature. Found predominantly in the rainforests of the Democratic Republic of Congo, this animal was unknown to the scientific animal prodding community until as late as 1901. That's likely because it was simply busy minding its own business in a place that even now has parts that are unmapped. The okapi has a shorter neck and shorter legs than the giraffe. It's dark brown, almost a purplish black color in places, and white. It has striped legs and a long tongue, and the male of the species is generally about 8 feet tall. The female, usually slightly taller and heavier. Much like the animals that it vaguely resembles, the okapi will give birth to one single calf. Their gestation is a rather lengthy 14 months, but this also means that when the baby is born, it's well and ready to stand up on its own to suckle from its mother within about a half an hour of being born. In the dangerous environment of the wild, the mother okapi will hide her baby in order to keep it safe while she goes to feed, and returning to nurse the baby on a regular basis. Number 4. Red Crab Next up, we have the red crab. This crustacean is cool in a lot of ways. One of the most interesting is the way in which the thing survives. The red crab is known for being able to regenerate a lost pincher, or a leg that has gone missing. This process will take a while though, it is not instantaneous, but will take the full time of three or four meltings to be completed. Even so, it's a really impressive skill to have. These creatures also go to great lengths to try and ensure that their offspring have every chance of survival. The female red crab is going to lay up to 100,000 eggs. Now, that's a whole lot of eggs, and should, just by sheer number mean that at least some of her spawn would make it. But the female crab goes above and beyond to give them the best chance. She'll lay her eggs when the tide is calm, scattering them across as much space as possible, and the effort that she goes through during this process will often kill her. There's no greater dedication to a future generation than that. Number 3. Polar Bear the polar bear mother will dig a deep den beneath the snow to give birth to her cubs. This is the best way to keep them safe in many dangers of the surface and freezing weather conditions of their home in the Arctic. The cubs are going to stay underground with their mother for a full three months before they're big enough and strong enough to come to the surface. During the long and almost completely dark time beneath the earth, the cubs will feed upon their mother's rich milk, they'll get bigger and stronger, and by the time they emerge, they'll likely each weigh about 10 kilos, or 22 pounds. It's a different story for the mother, though. Feeding her offspring for three long Long months has diminished her to not much more than a bag of bones, and the first thing that she needs to do when she comes out of the den is to have a big meal. This might have once been a more simple thing, but shrinking ice and the greater distances between places where she may find prey have made this a massive challenge. She barely has the strength to hunt, but she has to eat or she's going to die, and so too will her cubs. Oh, sorry, that's put a bit of a downer on the proceedings, hasn't it? My pet guinea pig Twinkle's just become very depressed. Number 2. Porcupine Giving birth to a porcupine sounds incredibly painful, so let's just get straight to the point, shall we? And yes, newborn porcupines are actually covered with their quills already, so this could all go horribly wrong. Except that, fortunately, there's an adaptation that means that those things will not poke into the birthing porcupine mother. Oh, the small blessings. These quills are still soft, and they've been thoughtfully enclosed in a sack so as to offer some protection to the mother while she's popping out the babies. The baby porcupine actually changes a lot in the first few hours of its life. These newborns are alert right from birth, their eyes are open, and they're ready to respond to the environment. The baby's quills will harden up very quickly, so that shows how the softness is truly an aid to their arrival in the world, I suppose. After this, they then feed exclusively from their mother's milk for a couple of weeks, but then fairly quickly after that begin to eat plants as well, becoming fully weaned in about four months. Number 1. Tasmanian Devil The Tasmanian Devil is a marsupial. 
So that means that they give birth to very, very tiny babies, which are not really ready to survive outside of their mother's body. The new babies are born at one end, and they crawl up their mother's fur to her pouch and clamber back in. Yes, that is basically the routine for all marsupial sorts of creatures. They will then spend several more months back in the safety of their mother's pouch, feeding from her milk and protected from the outside world. Tasmanian devil babies are technically born after only about three weeks of pregnancy, but they then hang out and feed almost constantly in the pouch until they're about four months old. They'll then begin to be weaned at six months and are independent by eight months. How fascinating. Thanks for taking that sometimes painful journey with us through the miracle of birth and life. It sure was a wild and exciting ride, wasn't it? Which of these animal births are most fascinating to you? And did any of these images give you the heebie-jeebies? As always, let me know all about your splendid thoughts in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.